I read the novel in 1970. <laughs> now, not, not many detail I, I can remember, but I know very well the film. Uh, so, um, since the beginning, I mentioned to Bernardo the idea that, uh, you know, Bernardo Bertolucci, um, he was uh, practically, since he was very, very young, into psychoanalysis. Uh, he mentioned to me since the beginning when, uh, when he called me for the spider stratagem and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I understood that any kind of decision they had, he was completely in, in a mix between the, something that is very conscious and something that is completely unconscious, completely, let's say, through symbols, through metaphor, through nothing is uh, full written, full told. Full uh, exposed, in particular in the character of the, the conformist Marcello Clerici, played by Jean Louis. Without any doubt, uh, since the beginning, I understood that uh, uh, we need some kind of difference between his, uh, let's say, way of living every day and what he really was int intimate himself. And the chance. Uh, um, the Bernardo probably Bernardo think take the decision to do the conformist because it's something that is a very uh, it can let's say uh, connected very much with the character not only because Alberto Moravia was a very good friend of his own father you know the Bernardo's father was a, a writer mainly a poet. Oh, and his yeah. very good friend was Alberto Moravia, Pierpaolo Pasolini, El Samorante, great writers uh, at that period. So without Bernardo was involved in the, those kind of literature, let's say. But the fact that it was uh, played in 1935, so during the fascist time, where there is many questions between that period, political period, Bernardo, of course, identified himself into those kind of, um, they say, character, position, and so on. So since the beginning, I mentioned to him, I said, Bernardo, I, I, I think uh, the, in, the way to uh, describe visually the character of Marcello, probably at the kind of period of, or in, in uh, the time, would be great to have the first part uh, there will be no connection between unconscious and unconscious. They will be completely separated. Uh, of course, the two symbols are conscious. You can, you can um, represent with light, unconscious with the unknown, so with darkness, with, with shadows. And uh, in my opinion, they're supposed to be kind of uh, straight separation between those two elements. About uh, that idea, uh, I don't remember, honestly, that I was thinking of the Caravaggio painting, the copy is right behind me, the Colino San Matteo, which I knew just a few years before, um, one year before, no, no more than that. Uh, you know, in, in any, uh, university, institution, institution in a, all over the world, I, I, I noticed, uh, teaching cinematography doesn't mean teaching the art. Particularly, I made the, the, the best school in Italy, Centro Sperimentale di Cinematografia, between 1958 and 1960, and particularly at that time, but I understood still now, and not only that, I mean, also American Film Institute, also U U USC, UCLA. Most of the uh, teaching is mainly technical. It's not connected with the art so strongly in the way they, in my opinion, are supposed to be. So at that moment, uh, I, I, I thought that uh, I can present to Bernardo some idea visual idea in very con in connection between light and shadows at that time. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and he said, Bernardo said, yeah, I like very much that. They try to keep separated these two elements, which is uh, why we call the conformist him, because he feel 
for what's happened to him when he was 12 years old, he felt uneasy when uh, one man, a driver, touched him physically. He didn't know exactly what he was, but um, you know, what's happening particularly to any human being, male or female, particularly when they are young, or particularly at that kind of age, and they cannot answer uh, the, uh, the kind of reason that's happened, or some kind of behavior at that moment, they put in their own unconscious. They practically hide in the reality because they are not ready to deal with it. Probably they do later on, like we all do, while we grow up, or are having a moment where you need a, a kind of a psychoanalyst to help you to understand what is going on. So I think that that kind of separation was very clear about representation, the character of Marcello. And Bernardo say, I love very much this idea, of story, but what we do when we arrive in Paris, because uh, that's supposed to be something that uh, completely different. You know, at that time, France, Paris particularly, was the city of the free people going there. But particularly from Italy, uh, the people that doesn't want to deal with the fascist political period of, of Mussolini, they went to, to France, they went to Paris. It's actually the same thing with the Spanish people, they don't want to deal with, with the, uh, the kind of the similar um, the Shamo concept of, of um, political, they went over there. So there is a kind of concept that Paris was the city of freedom. You can play, you can, you can act, you can, you can discuss political to everybody without being so restricted where right? you could be in, 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 Mar in Madrid or in, in Rome. So um, how honestly, does that how does Honestly, that translate of the film, the look of Paris at that time? That's what, that's what I tried to say. I know that I'm too long to explain it to you, but <laughs> that's my way of explaining. If okay. I was separated between the two, light and shadows, now I need to unite everything. Now I need to, ever see, to see something that will be full light. There will be no shadows. There will be no something that you have to hide, that you can be open. I was lucky. The, when we went in Paris was the beginning of December, more or less this time. Uh, Paris is in North Europe, and usually it's, it's, it's winter, and is uh, most of the time there is a very big cloud, or particularly darker. I was remember the first scene that we did in in, in, um, in Paris was the Dominique Sanda teaching dancing to the little children. We were into an interior of the dancing room and using the artificial light in interior was showing the stereo completely blue. And I was shocked. For me, it was, I was never taught in advance that idea. I saw those kind of images where you say, Bernardo, look how beautiful is this difference between the interior with, with the artificial light and the stereo with natural light. I love this look very much. And he said, Vittorio is great. And I said to him, Bernardo, but uh, maybe we shouldn't use those kind of idea only for this sequence. Most of the time in many picture, you can do one shot or one sequence at dusk time. It is a kind of magic hour, no? They give you the, the, the natural light of this kind of color. I said to him, honestly, I didn't know exactly the meaning of the color blue. I, I know the, the meaning of the color much later on, but I felt that it was right. And I say, let's do the entire uh, sequence in a stereo of Paris in this color. Bernardo said to me, Vittorio, I like, really, not don't like, I love the idea, but uh, we have two weeks to film the sequence in Paris. In two mm -hmm. weeks time, we have a Christian time, Christian time, we have to go back to Rome, do whatever you can. With anything, with any something, but we have to shoot from eight o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the evening. And that was really a major chance for me to try to make it uh, those kind of vision with the kind of simple element that we have at that time in the technology. But the idea, in my opinion, was the most important one. Good.
Bernardo was already in uh, reproduction. I was filming with Dario Argento the, the bird of the crystal plumage. Bernardo called me and um, um, he already spoke to me uh, while we finished Padre Sadejma about the conformist. But that call was, um, uh, let's say, almost at the end of the um, Dario Argento film. He said, Vittorio, can we see each other? And uh, maybe sun, Saturday morning, you don't, we don't shoot in your way, Saturday and Sunday in Italy. And um, so we start to look, I can start to show you some, some kind of the location. So we start to talk about the, uh, don't forget that at that time, uh, there was not the, the way the later, particularly when I did the picture with the Francis Coppola, Warren Beatty, the, the idea to put the, the entire head of the department in one table and start to discuss between all of, all of us in, in front of the director, which was our idea in connection to the art department, costume, um, cinematography, and so on. At that time, Bernardo me about cinematography, with Ferdinando Scarfiotti about the, the set, with Jit Magrini about the costume design, with um, the, um, De La Rue about the music and so on. It was a kind, of, he was holding everybody, but in a single con con contest, let's say. So I went to Sunday morning in, a, in a Roma, in the Lungo Tevere, in, into this apartment, and Bernardo said to me, Vittorio, Speaking with Dando, Fernando Scarfiotti, we had the idea to film inside the real location, to feel the reality of the living of the time, but outside any window. We don't want to see anything reality. With, we, with Dando, we think that we can put some kind of photograph, painting, any kind of uh, images that telling us the outside, which means fascism the period of the fascist time is outside, they will look, no, they is not real. They look like they, there is something funny. There is something uh, not, not for real. But the, here we have a problem because the sidewalk is not too wide in order that we can put like a structure, a billboard or something outside the, every window. So they said to us that we can, know, we can have maximum couple of meters for us, not, no more than that. So we don't have the chance to do it. What do you think? What we can do? Uh, actually, I, at that time, I saw the, 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 the kind of Venetian blind, they were in wood. Uh, that was quite normal in uh, the house in the, the, that was made in 1930, 1940, the time. They were way up. And I say, well, Bernardo, look at this kind of thing. I went over there. I pulled down the Venetian blind. When they come down, they open a little bit. Until they, if you want, you can close. My, I kept them open. And I told him, look over here. There is only the little strip of light, practically, we can see. We don't really see outside. But I can have a very strong arc light making strip of light coming through into this kind of penumbra. I don't know how came this idea. I knew um, um, the painting of Caravaggio, honestly, that I told you one year before, one or two years before. My, I, I don't have any memory of those kind of, of um, example to think in a Caravaggio, no. I only went for that kind of idea to keep the concept that the reality true was told by light. And now in this moment, the light was really very thin everywhere, but the unconscious is practically all over. In, in, a, in a kind of this. So that was a kind of separation that was giving me the feeling of Marcello Clerici. And Bernardo said, fantastic, Victoria, I love very much. But uh, uh, this is what was, you know, Bernardo was 28, I was 29 at the time when we started the conforming. We were pretty young. The day why we start shooting and um, once in a while, the electrical person outside was advised the, the gaffer that was inside the set that they have to change the carbon. You know, the strip light was, made, was possible because uh, arc light, uh, I usually have two naked and positive, very close. They touch, they make a little flame between these two carbon sides, one positive, and they make a very strong 
are very thin light. Those thin light goes really straight, uh, doesn't have any chance to go around to any element in front of it and make those strip light very strong, very, very, very neat. And uh, once in a while they have to, because the carbon getting uh, consumed practically, at one point they have to change the carbon. And they, um, they, they call me and I can say, wait a minute, we have another 30 seconds to finish the sequence. So maybe, okay, change the carbon. When they have to change the carbon, the, 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 the light was up to the stand. They have to, with the wheel, they have to go down with, this, with, the, with, the, with the arc light. And at one point we see the light going, flowing up. <laughs> when I have the watch, I say, we tell you, look how beautiful it is. <laughs> why, why we don't use it? And I say, Bernardo, it's, it's no, 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 doesn't have any logic. No, no, let's do it emotionally, anytime. The, 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 lady, the young lady go physically in front of him and try to kiss him and try to what, what make you love with him. So anytime they go with an emotion, the light move. <laughs> and that's why we, I say, I said, fantastic. Okay, and so we invent a kind of, or switch with one little light outside. So when we, Stefania Sandrelli, stand and go on top of him, I will be making a, a, clear, a queue outside and the electrician starts to go down with the, the it was totally uh, fantastic, totally emotional. Uh, there is yeah. no any justification. That's what we, what we were. I mean, Conformist was uh, a movie that was made uh, with, um, Oh, probably because we were pretty young and we love cinema, but we invented anything uh, that can have uh, not necessarily a logic. What is important was the emotion. What is important was the fact that between reality and unreal, conscious and unconscious. That was the two main key all the time. Technically, once again, particularly in Betrucci films, don't try to understand the logic. Don't try to understand the, the practical, uh, normal, uh, um, let's say, answer. Most of the time can be an idea that doesn't have any answer. Most of the time is a suggestion. Most of the time is a kind of, that you feel to do something different, uh, what is normal. Play. You know, at the beginning, Bernardo told me, when you called me for the conformist, we did already Spider Stratagem before. He said, Victoria, at one moment I was thinking that doing the conformist was better call an ancient cinematographer. There was play cinematography more or less in around 1940. But later I understood that they also the director supposed to be at that age in case we want to do the replica in the way they was filming at, at that time. So that's why I like the, we do together again, because we have the same age. Bernardo is one year younger. So don't take that you have to give an answer to anything. Practically, Bernardo, I, I mentioned you again, the, the decision of the shot is about Bernardo. And um, when you have a, a two minutes more, I can tell you why it was in this way. But at this moment, Bernardo, this moment, he says, Vittorio, I would like to give uh, uh, something uneasy, something non normal in this little sequence, just to go to the mother house. The relationship between the son and the mother, the son of the father, is very important for Bernardo. And always he's tried to go in, into a particular look, let's say. And uh, so we started with the Dutch, we call it Dutch angle. I don't know why it's called Dutch angle, but it was giving the feeling of an easy way of feeling. But at the moment that we arrived, we didn't know that was, the, the um, Manganiello was following him as well. Right. So there is two kinds of different things, uh, uh, those two elements. But as soon as we arrived inside the gate, and we have Marcello arriving and the Manganiello following, I said to Bernardo, Bernardo, in order maybe to make specific uh, that kind of look that we had till now, would be nice that now he feel going into his own house practically where he was living with his mother. 
So maybe we should go more changing the shot into the shot and going normal. That's why it was the kind of tilt. Once again, the answer is only the unknown, the mystery, because we were in, in, a, in, a, in a nice uh, um, little house in 1920, it was, was not the real house, of course. It's something, some little villa near Villa Borghese that was empty, uh, uh, so the production could rent, and we were shooting the interior and also the exterior of the garden. And uh, the moment, uh, the, there are two moments. One was the, the, the chance to go inside the villa with the change of the shot. Going out, uh, while we were preparing to go into the car, and the car leaving to go to the hospital where his father was, uh, Bernardo asked to the, uh, the special effect that, that, that was on the set all the time, in case we need the smoke, we need wind, and so on. Can, we, can you bloom it, all those beautiful uh, leaves on the floor and usually when every time they use that we use wind they use from in front of the camera so they're coming towards no he wants to do exactly the opposite like, like the camera is pushing on the leaves it's something that happened to his mind and we did it and it was beautiful and we did it. that's yes. all When we saw The Conformist in the 1970s <clears throat> and 1980s, at about 38 minutes into the picture, there was always what, what I, was my favorite cut in the movie where uh, Trantignon is in the confessional box and the priest is, is criticizing him very heavily just before he gets married about his sins. And then he says something to the effect of, I'm a member of the fascist party. And the priest says, your sins are forgiven. And he slams the, do the window of the confessional door and it's over. And then you hear the whistle of the train going to Ventimiglia and you cut you immediately to uh, the two of them on their honeymoon night on the train. Then in 1994, uh, uh, Bernardo decided to put a scene back in that I guess he had taken out, maybe at the New York Film Festival in America or something, this dance of the blind people, which is now in the film permanently uh, ever since. And sort of gives a different flow to the narrative of that time. I wondered if, and that's a very sophisticated scene that was staged, what, what are your, do you have any feelings about that, that he, you know, sure. putting it back in 25 years later and so forth? At that time, uh, we were printing in Technicolor Rome with the system, I don't know if you know the system, it's uh, Imbibition. So it was the, uh, the metric system. It was yes. not just positive and negative and positive, but the negative was uh, uh, in three masters for the three primary color, and they were printed there, let's say, on in beaten with with the with the ink, uh, the, the tip may main, main uh, complementary color on a blank film. Okay, that was the system that we did. The conformist it uh, was done. The Godfather in in in, uh, in America. So most of the film that was done in technical was used for this kind of system. Beautiful system, great system. I still yeah. see a print in America in a cinema that was from, from the IB. 1974 was the last year in America, I think. Uh, well, no. In yeah, the US, no, yes, anyway. yes, 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 yeah, at the time, yes. The last, I think the last movie was really probably The Conformist. Uh, we did, uh, the, and I, at, at the beginning of 1900, it was also the same kind of, um, of system. Uh, but while we were, Printing the first shot, practical results. In anyhow, we made the film in in in, in the in, um, um, edit the picture in in a um, in visual system. Bernardo went to Berlin Film Festival. And I don't know why. While he was watching, or was somebody or, or um, journalist or critics? I don't know why. Probably mentioned to him the movie was a little longer. Bernardo said, "How oh, I can cut down the picture because uh, everything." Uh, seems to me properly made, the, the, the editor was a great editor, Kim Marcalli. First mm -hmm. time that he was working with Bernardo and after he went with, uh, on with me, he came also in Last Tango in Paris in um, 1900. Right. One of the greatest editors I ever met. 
uh, the idea to cut entirely the sequence was nine minutes practically. That's the way to, because he doesn't like to go into different sequences to cut over them. So practically they cut the metrics uh, on, uh, the, of these nine minutes uh, and the film came out uh, without the, the blind sequence. Uh, the, 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 the picture was shown to the New York Film Festival. I know that because Francis Coppola told me they saw the movie over there. We got the two awards from the Critics of New York, Best Director, Best Cinematographer for the Conformist at that time. This was my first award, particularly in connected with the, um, uh, Bernardo was fantastic. Anyhow, that's the way it was released the movie. Many people love it, many people hide it, but, but most, most of the time it was kind of strong impact, let's say, the, the unusual way to deal. Don't forget that till that time, there was any, in anybody's mind that any the, the, um, film cannot be done in color if it's dramatic, because the technician was telling us to everybody the one day, in order to be dramatic, you have to deal with shadows. Is that the, the, the kind of system at that time, they said, not in the proper way, the, the, the system could not record the color well in shadows. So mainly everybody was doing color film, comedy, musical, exterior, but dramatic film was in black and white till 1960, I'd say 1969. In 1970, conformist in Italy, but Bill Mozigmund in, in Maccabre, Mrs. Miller in America, Gordon Willis in The Godfather, we all start to change this vision, to train, using color in dramatic way. Mm -hmm. um, so when uh, time passed by, uh, and uh, and I went to uh, with the, we started to transfer film on video to go on on, on um, to go on the television on tape, and I went to Los Angeles because there there was the first time they they, they have the high definition system in, in to transfer the film, and I, I was supposed to do the the full screen for laser disc for and the, the unfortunately. The, the, the cut, the, because the film was, was filmed in a system of 1 to 166, the French panoramic system. Right. So the, the television was a little closer, 137, 135, like that. And I went and, uh, um, and the, um, Gary Smith, the gentleman at Paramount, that was dealing with the video, um, um, took me into the room and I, uh, they met a wonderful Lou Levinson, a great colorist. And we started to, stay, start to, do, to do the transfer of the conformist. And we are at one moment, boom, everything has come, come out with the, the blind sequence. Uh -huh. they, I know that there was no assistant any longer. Practically, it was cut in the metrics, but not in the real negative. Wow. And I saw the entire, and in fact, the sequence was not never dubbed in English, it was all still in Italia. I called right away Bernardo. I say, Bernardo, blah, 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 blah. And say, fantastic, Vittorio. Can I call what I should do? Shall I cut it or shall I keep it? Keep it. <laughs> wow. Because Bernardo always think that the movie is always in progress. So practically we keep it in the transfer. And later they, they um, I remember there was a, a kind of deal in what to do, put subtitle, because there was no, the real actor was, uh, the, 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 the Italian version with subtitle was perfect. But the, the dubbing, the dubbed one in English, of course the sequence was in Italian. So I don't remember now what they did for the English version of the conformist now. I think it was a subtitle. But finally, this, the blind sequence came back to life. Wow, what a, what a story. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. We always hated that dub version, by the way, in America. Oh. It was like, that was like an accident, a terrible yeah. one. But the, the, it's interesting. The, the, do you remember that at the beginning I told you that we never had meeting together with Bernardo, Scarfiotti, Magritte, Arcali, and so on. So we were doing that because I just finished the... the <clears throat> The, the build of the Christa Puma just really connected with the beginning of almost shooting. So while we were shooting, we also we were doing a final location. 
every Sunday we were doing with uh, Nando Scarfiotti, Bernardo and myself, looking into this uh, area where they, they prepare the exhibition in 1940. Um, um, at, at, the, at that time, the architecture made uh, between 1935 and 1940, that they built a lot of building in a, in, a, in a very particular architecture style, which was perfect for the time, anyhow. Um, so we were looking at a different uh, set, let's say, till we arrived in, at that moment, I remember the long while Bernardo go, myself and Nando Scarfiotti alone, looking at one under, there was um, in, in, a, in this building, there was also in, um, under the, the first level, but you can have a little window on top that you can see the, the, the sidewalk where people was passing by up there. And uh, Nando said, you know, the fact that they, we want to have a, 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 a location there for blind people, they, 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 they don't have too much money, they don't want to be exposed. So this can be interesting, the fact that they can uh, under the first floor. Good, and they, uh, Nando asked me, Vittorio, what do you think? Which kind of light you can uh, like to have over here? And I said, well, feeling to have something that is uh, not realistic, let's say. I don't like to have the light coming through those small window on top of the, of the frame, uh, like a normal sequence. What kind of present blind people can do to somebody that has the, 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 the view? And I said, that in my opinion, this, they would love to give you know, the, the best present they can because they cannot see colors. So why we don't have a, a Chinese bowl you know, made by paper, you know, with different color. Mm -hmm. So practically we, we can have all the color that we want all around. We don't have to have a specific color, but colors everywhere. So any way they move, they change the color, the face and so on, which is the best present that they can give to somebody they can see if they cannot. That's how it did, how we did. There was a law at that moment in Italy in order to, be, to become Italian film, you have to shoot at least two weeks into the studio. That was a kind of dealing with the, with the, the, the law of cinema, let's say. But apart from that, because Bernardo usually loved to shoot in location, but we need to do something in, 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 in his studio. So we done two different sequences. One is this one, and one is the radio station. That's all. The rest was all lo real location. The idea was uh, very simple, but very strong. Uh, doing the, like called, at that time we call rare projection. So practically we had the, the segment of the, of the uh, carriage of the, the, the inside of the, the train, where the two uh, play the, the scene about the fact that the, uh, his wife, they just married and they, they, they do just honeymoon. And, the, and the, the, the wife tried to, to be honest with him and tried to tell him that she was no, he's not ill bad any longer, that she has in, in some, some physical uh, affair with somebody else. And that was very strange, the, the connection between the two. Look like they is almost pleased about the fact that she is not ill bad, that she is not really a young girl, that's all. But uh, there was another idea into that. The chance to move from the vision of Rome to vision of, uh, of Paris, um, and, and we said, okay, I, I'm going to film in the real location that we go on, on uh, between the, um, with the train moving. And I went with my little crew of the camera in, in one Sunday to do some shot just to, to view outside. But at the end, when we were into the, 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 the Chamo de Carriage, I, I said, Bernardo, the idea I would like to show outside something that uh, tra the traveling in train between Rome and Paris probably can be six hours, 10 hours. I don't remember what was exactly the time of the train at the time. But the sequence looked like only five minutes. And Bernard had wonderful ideas. He said, Vittorio, okay, 
I love it if we can show the reality of that they are inside, but outside is a kind of fantasy time they go. So practically outside, we should go from, from morning to afternoon to sunset to evening. So the time that you spend real to arrive in Paris. It was a, it was a sequence that uh, when we are, this sequence was shot in Rome, uh, inside to um, a nice villa. Uh, uh, and it was also 1930 period of time, uh, made with some kind of Chinese uh, um, element. Uh, the person that lived there before was coming from, uh, left, uh, lived a lot in China. That's why later when you see the house, you see different arts or so on. Anyhow, um, when they are into this room, uh, in, in Marcello Gratis said that you left us, student, uh, you remember your last lesson, the Plato Myth of the Cave. And at that point, they tried to repeat, the, repeat the, the, the myth. He tried to close one window, um, so there is only one window on. So can, only one light can come through over there. And the rest of his own shadows. Bernardo, that morning, explaining to me the myth of the cave, I didn't know absolutely nothing about Plato. So I, I keep repeating that the school at that time, even the best school all around the world, they never were talking to cinematography section about philosophy, painting, music, or so on and so on and so on. So Bernardo explained me the myth. And I said, okay, thank you, Bernardo. Um, I, I called the, the assistant the production. I said, I need the permission underneath. We were at the first floor, second floor, probably. They need underneath, there is a garden, somebody else living below. That I need to put an arc light, which, which is pretty pretty big one, um, in, in a, on, on a tower, so I can have the light coming through. And um, to make this, uh, the moment that uh, they close the window, this one probably become the unique light. And so we have a kind of feeling of the light coming through the meat of the prey. You, you remember the, the, the meat, I mean, there are prisoners inside the, the cave, they have China since uh, they were born, and they are forced to look at the end of, um, end of, the, of the cave. And they looking at some moving shadows created by a fire behind the, the, um, the, the open cave. And there are some people passing by in front of those kind of flame, flame creating these moving shadows because they're moving with the statue and flag and so on. And I, and I said, okay, Bernardo, let's see, uh, give me a few minutes because I, I need to have a permission, physical permission to put my light. The gentleman went down, spoke with the lady and, um, and the lady said, no, 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 sorry. I, I have a nice garden. I, I care very much about my garden. I take it all any, any, any morning and care of the little flower. If you put the parallel over here, you destroy my garden and can, not possible. The guy came back to me. I said, my God, if I don't have the permission, I cannot really deal with the, my idea with this, uh, creating a, the meat of Prado over here. So I went down, I spoke with the lady. I explained the entire, the, the meat of the cave. And she this was very nice lesson to me. And I said, please, madam, you understand that now I try with the light to recreate a philosophic meat. And she said, please take care of my garden. <laughs> don't, don't destroy my garden. So I went with the, with the grip and I was following exactly what they pinned the tower to come up there, just when electrician went up to the hill, and finally we can able to do the sequence. You write that there is a myth of the, the myth is a, the metaphor of cinema. The, oh, yeah. the, the cave is like the theater. The, 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 um, the prisoners are like the audience. The fire outside is like the projector, and the <laughs> film or, or the sensor is like the moving people. Exactly the, the metaphor of cinema. That's why before I said, that, don't forget, uh, don't exist reality in cinema. Cinema real, cinema, the cinema verity do not exist. Cinema is an invention. Cinema is an imagination. Cinema is a, 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 a creation. Cinema particularly is dealing to any kind of um, 
mystery that you want to relieve or you want to keep, but nothing to do with reality. I have to be realistic in the sense that you have to make uh, believable at those kind of sequence that you that you prepare as a director or as an actor. But nothing is real. At that time, uh, I was uh, uh, <clears throat> for almost six years camera operator. And I started to be a cinematographer just uh, three years before The Conformist, doing uh, Giovinizza, Giovinizza with Franco Rossi. That's why Bernardo saw this movie, called me to do Spider Strategy and so on. So any camera shot done by hand, I was doing myself. Because was once Bernardo take with the finder, I try to understand, knowing the, the dialogue, which kind of shot supposed to be done. After he's calling the grip, putting the dolly, going the camera, fixing with the double or, or, or the real actor, and after asking to me, Vittorio, look in the camera, see if I think he's fine, let me know. As, uh, as soon after, go the camera operator. It was difficult sometimes to explain him to the camera operator, Bernardo and Vittorio's feeling. So most of the time I was taking the camera myself. All the camera and that camera, also the shot at following Dominique Chandar running in the, in the forest was done by myself. Because uh, uh, to, um, it, it's impossible to explain something very special that you have to do maybe to, to tilt or to be closer, to be wider in some kind of dramatic point. At that time, I was quite young. I was 30 years old. So I could, I could do. And the, uh, the, the idea to do just end camera once, but I, we did, I think, uh, three times, two or three times, yes, was because we were in the North Italy. In the, uh, once again, it was winter. And at one moment, uh, Bernardo realized that we practically have only one afternoon to finish the sequence of the killing of the father. And we don't, we don't have the chance to put the camera doll, the crane or whatever other um, tool they normally was using. And he says, he asked him to me, Vittorio, what we can do? Because we, we, we have also a couple of hours, no more than that. So we have to do all the entire thing in one shot. And I say, Bernardo, let's do it uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of more dramatic way, probably. Uh, let me try to follow her till the, till the end. And uh, so that's what we did. And um, the, the shot was quite complicated because uh, at the beginning, I was pretty far away have to try to follow. Well, after reaching the second assassin, they tried to uh, throw the gun to the man in front of him in order to pick up the other one. Sometimes I was almost stopping, was not able to look into the camera. I was putting the camera over here, practically with not seeing the camera because I was, uh, I was running so much. I was uh, more or less trying to be in shot. And, and I was falling. Only when, when they stop, they throw the gun. I was able to go in the camera and try to understand the way I was. And after it was continued. Till that I wrap it up to the end. And when the Dominique was completely shot and falling down, Bernardo was far away, of course. I took the decision to, to do, don't stay over there because Stop over there in, 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 in uh, the leading car dying. Uh, was seems to me there was no any emotion. So I tried to turn around to her. Tried to almost turn around. And I did the first shot. When we finish, uh, Bernardo asked me, Vittorio, what is going on? He said, Vittorio, he said, why are you there, Vittorio? I saw you that you were turning around her. But why do you don't turn completely in the way after you can see the assassin go away? They did their own, their, their own work, let's say. So we finish with them in one single shot. If you notice in the, in the sequence, once in a while, there is also one tele lens. Because for safety, Bernardo put any out, piece of dolly with the long lens with the other camera operator, just in case he need to have a little cut. But one or two little pieces, I think, in, in the same sequence. And uh, I did uh, once again everything. I turned around, I went with the, with the people, and I finished. 
<laughs> I was like, <laughs> because I mean, everything was up here. And at, at the end, is Bernardo says, Vittorio, practically we finish. We have another 15 minutes, no more. You, you think, uh, are you sure? I say, Bernardo, believe me, I, I, I sure when I look into what I, whether I have the camera over here, also the light doesn't go into the, 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 the loop. Uh, I, I guess, but I'm not completely sure. I, I think he's fine. <laughs> and uh, I said, let's do another shot. Can you make another shot? <laughs> let's try. <laughs> I did the third shot. And when I arrived, I was really fun. Bernardo said to me, Vittorio, how is how, how going? I said, Bernardo, the emotion is so strong that I don't care how the, it looks. I, I, I can tell you there was an incredible, incredible, incredible emotion the entire sequence. But I didn't know what I shot at. You have said that on The Conformist, you did not have much time for pre-production, that you were scouting locations while you were filming in other locations. Yeah. Um, did you do any kind of pre-production with storyboards or anything? You just did it all right there. First of all, Bernardo doesn't like storyboard. Second, we was not in our mind. Uh, normally, uh, <clears throat> Italian director at the time, you know, don't forget that at that moment we had a great director, Federico Fellini, Michelangelo Antonioni, um, uh, Luchino Visconti, so on. They were the, the most important director at that time, 1950, 1960, 1970. Bernardo Bertolucci, Marco Bellocchio, Liliana Cavani, and so on, was a kind of new generation. And I was like, he liked to come into the, this generation, I was the same age. And we normally we were doing film very, very small money. We don't have too much money to make movie. So that's why Bernardo also, because he was feel with the camera more in, in, in a realistic place, in location than not in studio. Going in studio for the entire picture was more, too much expensive. Uh, we shot the conformities with a little camera, noisy camera. The, the, because we were waiting for a small camera with the soundproof from Mitchell, the way it was promising, prom, promises to us, but never arrived. So practically you cannot believe it. we shot Arlie 2, which was the little camera that they were using for the news. We shot the conformity. <laughs> but honestly, it, it was because when we started by the stratagem, Bernardo told me to, uh, when he was uh, early, um, Vittorio, this movie is very, very little. It's a movie from television. We have no, really very little money, but uh, for me, sound is important as images. So maybe we don't want to, you, we can't have a, a big uh, studio camera with uh, proof sound, but we have to shoot maybe with a, with a small camera, but I want proof sound. So maybe we should shoot in 16 millimeter, uh, blow up in 35. Uh, and I say, well, at that time, several directors tried to do this kind of system because money, because the budget of the picture. And there was a studio, uh, at, um, a little uh, laboratory, it was called Vittori. They was tried to do this kind of thing. I think they do, was doing well. So we did test for spider stratagem in 60 millimeter, but at the same time we were talking, one thing that we also had since the beginning with Bernardo, some kind of picture, picture painting reference. I, in spite of strategy, I, I remember it took me to a, a big library, beautiful library. He showed me a, a book about René Magritte, the surrealistic painting. I didn't know anything about him. As I mentioned to you, I was not educated in those kind of things. It was so beautiful. So, but at the same time, because when I did the first film with Bernardo was an assistant before the revolution, Six hour, six year early, I met uh, some um, naive painter called Antonio Ligabue from from that area, and I love the kind of uh, color saturation of the of the painting of naive. And I said to Bernardo, in spite of stratagem, why we don't use, also use those those mixing between surrealism and uh, naive naivety to give this kind of. You know, um, chance to have two, two different time. The, the story was about one son searching for the father 
um, that. That's what the 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 the, 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 the strategy the concept. Absolutely not. No, 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 there was no in our mind, no in our budget, no in our feeling. Practically, we, the, 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 the new generation of Bernardo, Bedocchio, and so on, and myself, uh, and so on, was to go in the real locations, very small crew, very small equipment, and doing um, uh, anything you can, as best you can. But uh, Bernardo has those kinds of, of, of a vision. First, he, he, he has to do the camera, the sides or the movement or the rhythm and so on. Why? Because his father was a poet. And Bernardo, of course, when he was very young, tried to follow the father's step. In fact, when he was 18, he gained an award for best poetry in something they wrote. But at one moment he understood, probably because also met at the same time Moravia, Pasolini, all those, Pasolini became a director. He was an assistant director with Pasolini in Acatone. So he started to love cinema. He said he understood that he, if he's writing with a pen, he will have always the shadows of his own father on him. So he understood that he, have, he, he wants to be a literature, he wants to be a poet, uh, might start to write with the camera. And he succeeded because he was using mainly his dog. Was the first, he was so young, he was 28. My, my, when, I, my, when I met, he was 22 in before the revolution. He, he's already did those kind of things. And it was a shock at me. The fact that they, nobody can tell him what to do with the camera. Nobody can interfere. No cinematographer, camera operator, nobody. He asked me to me all the time, what do you think, Vittorio? But in case uh, I was telling to Bernardo, Bernardo, I think it's great beginning. I think the follow, but maybe at the end, it's not strong enough to end him. He was going back to the camera. I was trying to, once again, he tried to a third solution. He never, never did exactly a suggestion, but he understood there was something that didn't work. And he had to search himself something. Otherwise, he don't shoot. Sometimes it's happened that uh, uh, it's happened in the conformity in one sequence. Uh, the we, um, the we, we prepare everything, he put the dolly, everything, but he stopped, he say, mm, I don't like it. Um, and I say, Bernardo, it's almost the end of the day. Do one shot just for, uh, just as, as, a, as a Rielso, as just to have something that uh, at least you can think in, hey, tomorrow morning we, we do it the way that you look. I say, no, Victoria cannot do it. And we didn't. Mm. So for him, the fact that he has to do himself that kind of things, he make specifically the two of us. He was writing with the camera, I was writing with the light. And that was uh, the best position for myself because we, with any other director, apart Carlos Saura, Carlos Saura has the same feeling because originally he was a photographer. So when I started to be Carlos Saura, I understood they also have to take care of the camera. No other light, no other color, that's me. That uh, I have much more freedom in my mind to be more, in, let's say, stronger in an idea in light in the color. Because in any other director, once uh, also Francis or Warren or Woody, they say, Vittorio, this is the scene and so on. And I think that maybe we can do this or this. What do you think? And I was say, can I make a suggestion? And maybe I suggest something different. And they said, yes or not. Of course, always the director had to give the approval. Otherwise, I cannot do it. But I, in one way, different percentage, I can, let's say, co uh, collaborate with the director in the way the, the camera should move, the camera should stay. No with Bernardo, no with Carlos. Uh, so in this way, let's say probably, um, conformis, last tango, last tempero, the little Buddha song are the the, con the 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 visual concept, the, the visual concept are even stronger than anyone because I can put all my energy into there. I always had the idea to present uh, a kind of cinematography ideation first to the director. If he doesn't like, uh, in, in convince me 
that there is a can, something different to be done, I'm very happy. If he doesn't like because I don't like it, that's it. I don't know the movie. If his story is part of my journey as well. So I think that uh, everything we do in our life eh, is about uh, who we are. If I like or not like, I don't feel, I don't feel to be part of the story because I will put up there completely myself into. Second, can I have a, a visual idea to propose to the director? Unless if I don't have an idea, why I go over there? I'm not able to go over there just to send the diffuse light all over and that's it. No, no, I cannot do it. I, I cannot tell you the title of the film that I say no to the actor because maybe I, I found that it was too, let's say, about uh, revenge. I don't like the word revenge. It was too much, uh, um, let's say, I don't say tragic at the moment, but was a, uh, no, you know, you can, you can be uh, hard, you can be dramatic, you can be, but have to have something always uh, they can, can tell you that there is some kind of, uh, an harmony feeling into not only conflict. Um, so that's why I, I, I like to work with very few directors. Your director was really Bernardo Bertolucci, Francisco Coppola, Warren Beatty, Carlo Saura, um, Woody Allen, mainly. Some see, film I made with some other director, like uh, Giuliano Montaldo, I made a story about um, <coughs> Giordano Bruno. Which, and also I did the story of the Caravaggio with uh, Angelo Longoni. Uh, I did with Giuseppe Padroni Griffi, great writer, great director for theater mainly. I did um, three pictures that was fantastic. But particularly picture, the major the time I was with mainly with the or Luca Ronconi that I made Orlando Furioso. Uh, but that's all. I mean, I, 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 I can have this, this number for the act to come to me, no more than that. Vittorio, I am very sorry to say that we have run over our hour's time and I must First of all, thank you very much for your time. You have been very generous with us. And I want to put in a thank you to our mutual friend, Dayan Georgievich, ASC, for introducing oh, us and you. helping this to happen. And you know why I have the, the, the copy? This is a copy of the real um, painting. The, the real one is much bigger. It's uh, 12 feet for 12 feet. This is only two feet for two feet because I need to have this image next to me. Because what Caravaggio said, with this beam of light crossing the darkness, when I, when I saw it, is the, the only painters, the only painting that I saw where he was really painted the, the journey of the light itself. And the concept that gave me, it divides practically the entire world in two, darkness and light, past and future unconscious and consciousness, humanity and divinity. And to me, it was uh, something that is in my bones. I mean, many people told me that the sequence of my of cards in, in Apocalypse now coming from this painting. I don't know, I never thought of this painting, what I was doing. Also the myth of the cave of Caravaggio, but it's something that in my own bones, it's coming out. And so happy they cannot believe.